Good afternoon, everyone. We have now reached our last presentation of the day. And um, I had a very brief discussion with the presenter. And I'm assuming everybody else in this room is also intimate with niobium. Thank you, I feel better. This presenter is J.S. David. He's the president and CEO of Niobay Metals. He'll be speaking about niobium, a critical metal that's necessary ingredient in the move to decarbonize our world. So I'd say put your glasses on high. Thank you, yes, niobium is pretty rare, and I'm gonna talk about niobium today and a little bit about the project that you guys have in your backyard. So first of all, uh, uh, we, uh, we know that we are on the uh, uh, metagamy uh, territory, we're acknowledging that, and uh, thank you for having me here today. So I'm gonna talk about niobium. What's niobium? and the project a little bit, but before that, who we are. So Niobe, Niobe, we have changed the name a few times, but this is a very old exploration company. Uh, a bunch of gar, uh, guys in, uh, in Abitibi create Niobe, uh, Niobe a long time ago. In fact, that was one of the first uh, exploration company so we're we're looking and we want to be part of the niobium world and uh, i was i was working for uh, one of the uh, three niobium mine in the world uh, Niobec. In fact, I'm living 20 minutes from that mine. So I know a little bit. I'm a geologist by training, and uh, I did my, uh, my degree at the uh, local university, the Shigutimi University, and we were pretty tight with, with, this, uh, with this mine. So, so again, I'm not an expert, but I know a little bit about it. Cheryl Derns. Uh, the Osisco Group owns 25% of Niobe. In fact, my office is in, uh, inside the uh, Osisco office in Montreal. In my whole life, I'm uh, one of the first Osisco member uh, when we started the Canadian Malartic Mine. I was uh, VP for, to get all the permit of that mine at the time. So uh, I'm back to my old life a little bit. CDPQ which is the pension plan, uh, the Quebec pension plan, they own 10%, and uh, the management owns 7%. I put that picture not for my picture, but for Serge Savar pictures. So it, it, that's the real Serge Savar, and why Serge is the chairman of our board, because Serge's dad started Niobay or you know, the, uh, this exploration company a long time ago. So, uh, so Serge is still on the board, and uh, you know, we've been in, in the mining business for quite a while. So, I can understand that why people, they don't know what niobium. It's pretty rare, it's not a rarer, it's a rare, a rare metal to find. Uh, there's a big guy in the room, which is CBMM. CBMM control, I will say, 80, 82, 83 percent of the market. CBMM is a family-owned company based in Brazil. Number two, you have the Catalao mine. Catalao mine was bought by China Mali around seven years ago. Uh, and uh, 
you can understand that all the production of that mine goes into China. And then you have Niobec. Niobec has been there for the last 48 years. And they still have material or reserve for at least for the next 20 years. So uh, they're mining a carbonatite. And this carbonatite looks very similar that the one that we have found in your backyard. So before I step to the project itself, so why niobium? So for us, yes, there's uh, only three players. We want to be the fourth player. And usually, you're using niobium. And when we purchase from Barrick that project, uh, here in Ontario, um, we thought that all the production of that future project will go to the steel industry. But, but, for the last three years, there's been a lot of changes. And now there's uh, companies and people using niobium in the battery sector. Why? because it has a fast charging and discharging capacity. And when you have those kind of battery, you can put a lot of cycles on it. So Akeon, one of the group, uh, you know, they test it for 20,000 cycles. Also, in a cold weather condition, using a niobium battery, you Keep your energy. Who are the players? Mainly Toshiba. Toshiba, it's not science fiction. There's, there's batteries with niobium actually on the market. Uh, Toshiba does have three types of uh, batteries. You have Akeon. Akeon now is working with Amazon. Akeon is providing batteries for the robot, uh, for the warehouse. Uh, Niobolt, you know, there, there may be a, a late player, but uh, we were discussing with them, and just for them, what they, they see for their production, they will need 8,000 8, um, uh, uh, tons of niobium oxide just for them. And you have also a player in the States called uh, Battery Street. Where those guy, guys put niobium? They put niobium on the anode side. So they all have their own recipe, but mainly we're talking about a, a TNO, a titanium, niobium oxide. So for the last, I would say, three to four years, we have batteries with anode made with uh, niobium. But the good news, good news for us, it's now they're working to put niobium on the cathode side. So that's going to increase the, uh, the demand. and. Uh, for the cathode side, we're talking about the lithium and uh, the, the, the lithium and niobium oxide. So again, for us, we said this is a great play. Because of the cycles, you can do a lot of cycles with the, those, uh, those batteries. We think, and those guys think, that the, the main uh, market will be for a hybrid uh, vehicle. But I've been talking with uh, Akeon, and Akeon, they see also a huge market in Europe. The, uh, the uh, let's say, not the gas station, but let's say the electric station for your car. Uh, they're, they're looking to put very large batteries, accumulator, and because the electricity, is, the electricity is cheaper during the night, they're going to fill those big batteries in the night, 
And during the day when people stop to fill their car, they're gonna use that energy from those batteries. So according to them, this is a, a huge market for them. Where we wanna play? We wanna play on the raw material side. So we're a miner, so we know that we, uh, we also want to provide the precursors, so the exact uh, material that those people are looking for. Are we going to play on the battery side? We don't know yet. We had discussion with, with, the, with, the, with, with the guys, but for now, we're going to put all our effort where we're good is to find and uh, it's to find uh, niobium. So that's the, this is the curve just for the ferro-niobium. Ferro-niobium is mainly used for the steel industry. So when we purchase again, that asset from Barrick in our mind is that, okay, there's, there's a, a, growing, a growing market, so we're gonna play and we're gonna try to be just under the growth. So we're looking to be, uh, I will say the fourth players, but I think this project can turn to be, and we can be the third player in the world. Uh, we don't want to create too much movement, but by targeting the 5%, I think it's, there's no problem with that. Also, cost-wise, price-wise, uh, when we did our PDA, the, the price was at $45 per kilo. Today is at $50 per kilo. So, uh, and it's pretty stable. CBMM controlling the, the price, if we're not making too much waves, we think that the price will stand. And uh, that's why I'm jumping to the James Bay project and uh, that's why we think that this is a great project uh, for here in Ontario. You have the steel industry, automobile industry, and now you're looking to be a player on the battery industry. So this project, very well for that. So the locations, it's 40, yeah, 42 kilometers uh, from Moose Creek. Um, again, we did the first round of drilling, and with that we were able to uh, to have a, a pretty good resource calculation. So uh, we're talking about uh, 20, yeah. 30 million metric ton at 0 .53. 0 .53, it's the grade of the underground mine in Quebec. With this PEA and the first uh, coming from the, the first round of uh, drilling, we were able to have a pretty good idea of what kind of operation uh, we can do since uh, there's uh, the ore is near the surface, uh, so we were able to, uh, to present three scenarios, the open pit, the hybrid, and the underground. So if you look at uh, those uh, post tax IRR, it's not bad at all, as the NPV. So that's why we decide after that to plan a second round of drilling to convert the, uh, let's say, the resource, so the uh, inferred resource to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to indicated resource. So the plan for 2021 and 2022 was, and still is, uh, to drill, uh, to do some infill drilling, to increase our uh, uh, resource to do another round of metallurgical work 
We did a first round of metallurgical work uh, previously, and, uh, and I, I've been in this field for, for quite a few years, and the challenge is to find the niobium, but when you found it, it's to make sure that you have a good metallurgy. It's pretty tricky. Talk to the niobec people, they've been struggling for, uh, on the metallurgy for many, many years. For this one, the pyrochlor, it's the coarse, it's, it's very coarse, it's very, it, it's very big. So uh, we had uh, no problem at all to produce a good concentrate. So uh, again, that was another star on, on, the, uh, on the book to say, let's move on. Let's, let's put some more money and let's find out. So, we're looking to do a pre-feasibility study after the sec this second round of, of drilling. And yes, we're, we're going to do the infill drilling, but also we're looking, it seems that there's a, a potential for a, an extension of the, the, uh, the, the core of the, uh, the high-grade zone. And uh, so the first drills that we, uh, we done in February and March was to target that place. I don't have today the result of that, but I can tell you that, uh, well, we will see the result, but it seems that uh, we have something going further deep and further north. So that means that you saw the, the three scenarios Probably the underground scenarios was okay, can be a lot, lot, lot better uh, after finishing the, the, the second round of drilling. However, so uh, you guys listened and heard all very good story since the beginning of the day. So my story it's not a happy ending, let's say that way. I, we've been stopped, even if we had uh, a permit, a uh, mining lease in, in due form, uh, to a protection agreement. We signed the last protection agreement in, in December. Uh, we've been told uh, on March 17 to, uh, to stop the, 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 uh, the drilling program by uh, the Moose Cree First Nation. So, again, we're patient. We don't want to create any fight. We know that we, we can do it. Legally, we can do it. We don't want to do that. We want to discuss. That's probably, have we put all the effort that we were supposed to? We thought that with, with all the signatures and the, well, with, with all the agreement we had, we would be able to finish and perform uh, this second round of drilling, but uh, it's not the case. So, so we're back around the table. So we need to uh, find a way to to uh, restart the discussions. We do have another asset in that area uh, called Valentine uh, at point forty three. Um, yeah, that was a poor, for, uh, yeah, 0.43 percent of uh, niobium. Uh, so we'll see, but we do have other projects elsewhere. We have assets in Quebec. We have, uh, but to be frank with you, uh, we will uh, we will love to continue uh, and finish this drilling program because with that information, we're going to be able to have a real project in our hands, and we're going to be able to tweak it uh, depending on you know, what their concerns are. And uh, so we need to finish that second round of drilling, that's for sure. So we're going to work. We're going to keep. I have my friend uh, uh, Phil Sutherland, Jr., uh, our advisor. Um, he's a Moose Creek First Nation member, and uh, he's going to add some uh, other people to this team, and we're going to continue uh, sharing ideas and try to find a way to uh, to continue this uh, 
this great project because, again, you have something great in your backyard. Thank you.